Hi gamers, I'm Cyber Settler, and today we're playing Interstellar Rift and we are uh, continuing our series um, regarding uh, the Lornar Explorer we are um, trying to reproduce this ship in um, Interstellar Rift and this is uh, the last thing I uh, this is how it looks now the, the the last things I did in the exterior um, so now we have these uh, two turrets like um, they are laser yeah I'll, at the end I just uh, placed a laser um, laser uh, turrets uh, to well, in, in total there are four, but they form like these two uh, twin turrets. And let's see here in the weapons. Yeah, they are they are described as light pulse laser. Uh, so now uh, what we are missing. Well, still there's some uh, ventilation we need to fix uh, also the maneuvers the thrusters and the engines these uh, these are the things that uh, this uh, help panel uh, tells us that we are missing but also um, we have to consider the the power right that we currently have so our ship currently uh, requires, uh, when going into hyperspace, it requires 578 uh, units of energy per tick. And if fully loaded, it needs almost 2000 per tick. Now, these batteries will give us um, 300 per tick. So they, they, they can hold a total of uh, one mi one and a half million um, energy units uh, but the amount of energy because they will slowly discharge as uh, we use them uh, they will slowly discharge and they will give off 300 uh, energy units per tick so if we if we want to reach for example um, almost here 600 per tick we need two batteries right to be um, in this case connected to uh, the cockpit because the cockpit is the one that consumes energy when we are in hyperspace and um, yeah and this drain number that you see there this is uh, the the amount of energy it takes to when when loading right so it can it can um, it can take up to 1,000 energy units when it's loading. Okay, so uh, this is per tick, and uh, yes, but if if we have the ship fully loaded, then it's almost 2,000 per tick. That means that we require um, at least seven uh, seven batteries right to to be able to uh, power this uh, the cockpit and and don't that means that if if all this um, cargo um, pallets are full right this would be the energy it would require the all the pallets are full and the uh, tank the hydrogen tank is full as well so um, we require seven um, batteries so until now we don't have enough batteries it seems to me and because only this would be only for the um, This would be only for the for, for the navigation, right? For the cockpit. So 
and shortly I will show you um, how to make these uh, power groups okay so another consideration is uh, I was thinking about is that I will use this gun well to place um, to place an ammo loader uh, okay and I will do that by probably by extending this room here I don't know if I remove the gun well group probably the gun well sorry the gun well um, room yeah I will add then a, a room called the gun well and there I will only place the the ammo loader this is the only thing we will use it for okay and probably then I will I will change some somewhat this um, layout because if we take the corridor I think we will uh, remove this because we will need to access this gun well somehow right There we are. Um, if we stick to the original design, the gun wall should be accessed uh, through uh, through the front. But that would mean that we will get rid of the kitchen. I think we will have to sacrifice it. The an alternative will be to. Um, to access it uh, through one of these um, side uh, rooms but I don't know if that um... anyways this is only decoration this kitchen it doesn't do anything um... but for now we are going to do it like that we can even place like a, a small door something like this so this this would be somehow faithful to the to our design it could be If we could place the kitchen like in this spot here, it would be perfect. But since uh, this is not like a, a an actual wall here, it's just a glass glass pane that um, act, acts a, as a division in the in the current room that is the corridor. Then we cannot place anything there, unfortunately. But we're going to do it like that, and yeah, maybe. Uh, perhaps at other um, we, we find another way to do it but for now let's do it like that and yeah there we do this so now we have uh, the the gun well there the other space we could place more um, more bed bunks bunk beds yeah and then we can free this space down here we can free it from these um, ammo loaders and then we can place more batteries there by the way, we need more um, cells.
So that that's four. I think. So there we are. The, the, so here we have um, all the the batteries and the uh, power cells necessary for the four groups. So we have uh, on each side four batteries and four power cells, and extra for the for the um, navigation we have here four. But we we said we need six, right? We need six, so we can place another one there and another one there. And this would be, that will bring the total to what we need. So that's done there. One thing you have to keep in mind, because of course you can fill up all this space with batteries, right? We could do like something like that. But what would be the problem with this? The problem with this would be that you cannot access um, the batteries that are um, just uh, next to the walls, right? And the, the, the reason you need to access these batteries is because if they get damaged, you need to repair them with a repair tool. Of course, um, if you have the armor generator with nanobots, these, uh, these nanobots will repair the systems that are damaged, the, dev the devices that are damaged, but only after they have repaired the armor and the hull. And they work really slow. So in, in emergency, you need to um, repair things with a repair tool uh, in a fast, uh, manner right you need to be fast so, so that's the reason why we need to i always uh, leave space uh, to to um to make all the devices accessible okay so that i think with that we finish or uh, a power or energy management um, here we have all these uh, little rooms here we have a bunch of small rooms with um, well these two are are being used for cargo right currently but they could be used for other things as well for example, we have not um, installed any um, salvage uh, unit. So we could replace one of these windows with a salvage unit and uh, another one with a disposal unit. So we don't have that right now. But for now, let's replace this with cargo. <clears throat> we can think about that at another time <coughs> so this would remain as um, storage rooms uh, we we can even place uh, well this would get uh, really crowded but in this way we can we can handle a lot of cargo like all this being storage you can also place lockers there we have currently two lockers and this is enough two lockers i mean in my experience uh, they have been enough for um, what i use them for okay so i think this is everything ah well here of course we can place more cargo um yeah and now what we can do is uh, i think this is everything 
I think uh, currently there there are still which is room five there's a room that is not named ah this would be storage ah sorry this is <coughs> starboard ah but there was also yes so storage starboard um front starboard back or aft they they also for for the for the things placed uh, on the front um Na a nautical term also is bow but I think front is is okay and there's still something that is not named which one is this shields I oh, know this is not shields anymore this was shields now it's um, storage Port front. Okay, and I think that's it. Okay, and there is still ventil, of course, ventilation. Ventilation is missing on <coughs> all the storage storage port which one ah this one storage port aft okay so we can place the the ventilation in the floor life support uh, floor fan for this one for that one for that one there we go and the gone well also needs ventilation so there that i think that fixes our ventilation issues um we are going now to place the engines let's play some engines So this one can hold three uh, big engines and as we place the engines we see the speed going up. Um, I think I will need to place more. Let's uh, try something here. I think this will work well. We So we can place six of them and now our speed is up as you can see here 174 oh what happened to that one 174 we can place extra small to bring that a little bit more yeah and that's uh, 200 meters per second um yeah this this speed will be reduced uh, as we as we load the um, as we load the ship and there's uh, some uh, differences between this side and that other side it seems that I made well these are two alternative designs right but I think we are going to go for that one uh, 
Yes. And then Okay, so what we should do next is uh, add some decoration, interior decoration. I will show you something, some some little tips of how I do it. So I think that's it. Okay. Uh, also, what is missing here is uh, some thrusters. Um, so, I I always tend to. Um, To place the thrusters in a logical way but uh, you have to keep in mind that this is this game is not like a simulation right and in that sense uh, I think I don't know if I can place one directly under I think it's this place uh, that it's one two three yeah this these are four places here one two three four yes this is the the direct the place directly below and then we will place ah we can just yeah that's what i was going to do yeah, this is better like this so it's not a simulation and in that sense you don't need to place like all these uh, thrust um, these attitude thrusters uh, you don't have to place them like in all the, 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 the positions that you would think of in a in a real spaceship right so you what what is important here is this number here that um, we can have uh, uh, as much of um, of a turning. This is like the the maximum turn rate. Like the we we try to have the maximum turn rate as possible. There we go. And here. Yes, and I think this is enough. Like the ones that I'm placing right now. These are the only ones missing now. And I think this will be enough because as you see we we have the maximum turning right already. But this the the ones that are placing now somehow make sense. But um if it was like a real um if it behaved like a real ship, I would be missing like uh, at least some front and aft uh, thrusters. Okay, so I think that's enough for now. So we we have completed our checklist. There's nothing pending uh, that would um, otherwise prevent our ship of uh, having uh, minimum functionality. What is required in the game and now we are going to focus on some decoration um you have like you there's different um, type of walls um 
so for example for the corridors I like using uh, this this type of um, design for these narrow corridors um, also for the I like also this industrial design uh, floors we can place that there and also here can do something like that Okay, for the rest, I use let's use some hexagons. I like the hexagons pattern for the floor, for example. Um, but with this color, right? This palette, because they won't be that. Ah, by the way. Um, if you want to test the lighting because currently we don't know if there's enough light uh, to see to to be able to walk or way about the ship uh, maybe I will change these floors as well okay so for that you you press here switch lighting mode and you see that <laughs> this is a very dark ship so we need light right we need light and uh, for example I'm going to switch back to our, our original palette I only chose that palette for the floor because otherwise is they are too dark um, and in furniture you can we can find some lights right so we can we can use the hexagon also for the Let's put a light here. The hexagon for the ceiling. Or, well, something we could do. This is not a bad idea. We could just place the industrial light here. That is a big one. And then place, like, for the ceiling, we can place some uh, industrial ceiling as well i like this sometimes i use this combination oh, but it's not in the like in the right now it's in the right direction sometimes i like this combination here like this type of ceiling that is uh, industrial that it has some tubes and things okay and then for the rest like for the for the corridor we can use the hexagon so let's use the hexagon ceiling basically for For our corridor, right? We can choose a different ceiling for the divisions in the middle, right? Uh, and also, yeah, for the storage. Okay, and we can place some lights in the corridor. Let's place uh, some lights like in the important
Yeah, the important thing is to 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 place the lighting uh, evenly distributed somehow, so we get enough light. So, for example, places to uh, put lights are in front of doors, of course, in front of um, um, in in places where we have um, intersections. Right. And now for this, um, like the, the the med bay and the and this uh, printing station here, we can uh, use the server. The server light and the server ceiling is like these uh, panels. They look like um, office uh, spaces um, type of things. For the walls, yeah, there's not much options right now. I don't know. I don't. I I for walls are I. Um, as I said, I, I use this for corridors, this type of, um, um, it, it looks like a little bit like, um, yeah, sci-fi, um, Star Wars panels. Uh, but otherwise, I tend not to, to use much wall decorations. For the um, for cargo, though I, I I like to use this type of wall. It gives like this um, idea that the 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 crates can be fixed to the walls. Um, also, we need light here. I think we will go for some yeah, when we have like cargo we cannot have we could use this uh, ceiling wall but the problem with this ceiling wall is that it's uh, it, it it is not flat and then um, the crates will somehow um, how, how it's called the crates will clip through the through the through the lighting so what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, place hexagons as well for the for the storage areas and we will use also the x hexagon ceiling to be consistent and let me place also this um, type of walls. Ah, I think we <laughs> we place we misplaced some things here. Here we need, let's see, for the floor, life support, the fan, okay, and then cargo, we misplaced that one. Let's make sure that the other one is also correct. Yeah, that one is correct. Okay. Yeah, basically... That would be, ah, uh, well, we have to check the lighting at the lower, ah, and here also. This is very dark. Okay, but here we can place again for the ceiling. We can place like this big um, light. Or do, do we place it here or there? Let's place it here. And then um, have the this um, 
Is this one or no, this industrial? There are two types. Okay, we can place like this other tube like. Oh, but not in that way. These are also some kind of. Oh, no, 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 I didn't want to do that. I hope it didn't take that as uh, I hope that the, the exterior is not destroyed right because of that error no so if I don't switch from one to the other it won't be updated okay but that looks good right for now the ceiling okay basically is that I will put some server ceiling here well we don't I think we don't need to put lights on the oh no but not like that I think we don't need um, lights on the on the central part because the, it's not like these are like private quarters so placing lights on them would would make them look some somewhat weird let's put light hexagon here and hexagon ceiling as well and now let's go to the lower area so here we are missing some lights um we can place again some industrial lighting here yeah really good lighting there and i don't know if this probably this will clip with the batteries i'm not sure and let's use this other no let's leave it like that okay what what are we missing lighting here right let's play the the hexagon light ah but we cannot do it there hmm this is tricky here um because also hmm, also we will need this wall decoration here and there The problem with this lighting, let's see how it looks. It could be that the light is hindered. Wait, not it doesn't look that bad. Okay, so A light here. I think we're done. Ah, and here as well. But this is, yeah. Uh, as you can see in this um, section for the turbo lift, 
we cannot place a wall uh, ceiling light here because what we have over is a catwalk a catwalk and for that we will need um, this type of ceiling this type of light with a framework something like that and then I think we are done uh, uh, yes and then the next thing would be to the next thing would be to to create the the groups the power groups let's do that let's save this let's go with the power groups the power groups we do that here so we're going to have the default we're going to have uh, uh, a group named defenses we're going to have a group named um, power we're going to have a group named navigation And we are going to have a group named Life Support. Okay, and the colors. Yeah, that's okay. We can use white as well. Defenses will be red. Power will be blue, navigation yellow, and life support green. Okay, so defenses would be. Uh, so for defenses, we will have the weapons, of course. Uh, defenses so this is how you assign it right you just uh, select the defenses group and click on the devices you want to include in that so the other things I include in defenses are the shield generator of course and the armor generator and for power, the only thing I put in power are the hydrogen generators. So this group is only used um, to generate power. So this, this group doesn't store power and doesn't consume power. It just generates power. And as I have explained uh, in, other, um, in other videos, this is like following this Star Trek style or FTL, if you will, style. Uh, game uh, style where you have like a power source that will um, distribute its power to all other systems and what you can do if you have this engineering station is that you can uh, switch batteries from one group or another or you can uh, switch um, generators from one group to another and in fact this is uh, how I use it um i i will have uh, a hydrogen generator per group so we have four groups of course four groups plus power but power is like the source and i will have uh, a generator per per group so four additional groups for um generators this generator each uh, generates 150 uh, energy units per tick. Uh, this this is uh, then routed through the power box. The power box then takes 100 this 150 um, uh, energy units, and then it it will um, provide this this energy to all the devices connected to that group 
so defenses we are done with it and navigation for navigation we will place the cockpit of course and the thrusters usually I will put the thrusters in a group called um, propulsion but since this is uh, this is minimalistic um, like we are, we are working with less groups than I usually work so we are assigning them to navigation okay so uh, that's that and life support in life support i will place of course the life support um, device that generates the oxygen and also the the vents the vents these are the floor vents the ceiling vents so we have to make sure that none will um, get overlooked that we have all or I think that's it that those are all the okay and also we will have in this group I usually put all these things like the bunk beds the toilet also in life support and the um, molecular assembler here this also belongs to that group ah also the escape pods belong to that group we have to make sure um, that the escape pods are turned off by default because these uh, escape pods they, they consume a lot of energy so i think we're done with that and with the power group well the only thing that we're missing is of course the the boxes and but i wanted to show you something like for example if you you can expand the the groups here and analyze what 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 is happening we have um two small uh, um, one small shield generator and the armor generator is assigned to it and four pulse lasers so in total is is training 230 okay so if we assign one battery to this group is enough because it it is consuming 230 per tick so it um, it consumes um, of course if if it's uh, turned on since 230 is more than 150 that it's what the power box will make available for this group it will be discharging the batteries but usually um, we have the the shield the small shield generator turned off and this is consuming 150 so as long as the small shield generator is uh, off then the batteries are being charged as soon as we turn on the shield generator the batteries will start to discharge so that's one thing but let's say a, a battery is enough for this one um, one thing is that if you see that you are going to be like in a long combat uh, with other um, like imagine that you are you're fighting some skrills or something that and, and you see that it's taking longer than 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 usual and you are your batteries in the defense your battery in the defense group is getting depleted you can assign one um, hydrogen generator to the defenses and this is i i um i do this um now and then when i when i have some like uh, exterminate some uh, skrill mission or if i sometimes i get overwhelmed with skrills then i will i will do that 
and then your your battery won't be uh, depleted and but it's enough right so we can assign so you see that there's a drain and also a peak a peak of 80 i think this peak is due to the lasers yes the pulse lasers will consume 20 20 of energy every time they shoot i think and uh, for that you need uh, um, the power cell so peak means peak means the energy that needs to be available instantly and uh, you uh, you should consider um, a power cell whenever you have this um, peak peak the peak is greater than zero in your um, power group so we are going to assign let's assign it right away a power cell and a battery to to the power group and now you see that now the, the the numbers change right now we have capacity and power generation but also you see that the drain increased this is this could become com confusing right once we assign these batteries now you see that the drain jumped from 230 to 1230 and this 1000 corresponds to uh, the the battery you see here that the battery uh, drains 1000 and this is while well, this it's charging it will consume 1000 this is what it means so keep that in mind it's not like you have you need more batteries <laughs> to compensate for that extra 1000 is is your battery the one that is consuming that when, uh, while it's charging that's what you have to be aware of now let's take a look at navigation we have the cockpit and six ion engines of class one and four ion engines class three and the maneuvering thruster so the drain is 109 and this is one single battery is enough for that and you see that there's no peak but you have to consider that we have the cockpit and this cockpit as we have discussed we know that this cockpit will drain energy this energy when um when we are in hyperspace so this is something to to take into consideration um, for this group and for that we we have um, seven uh, batteries for it although i i see that fully loaded has now increased to three thousand so seven batteries um, could be not enough for if it's fully loaded so let's maybe we will need more batteries how much batteries will we need like 10 or 11 batteries that's quite a lot so currently we have um, seven seven how much do we need three more right three more okay for life support it will consume uh, 2075 and this is this 2000 is because of the escape pods they drain a lot of energy Ah, but I think this drain is while they are charging. They they somehow charge first. So they have, you see that they have 15 million capacity of um, storage. Yeah. So you um. 
we we have to um, to take out these two thousands because usually it's not um, taking two thousand, so it takes less than um, what is it? Seventy five is what is consumed. It's more than enough to have one single battery. But you need this peak five hundred. This peak is used by the molecular assembler. So if you spawn in your ship, you will need this 500 units of energy instantly. So it's like a, the, in that sense, it's like the teleporter. So one battery and one cell is enough. And for the default, um, the drain is 700. Oh, it seems that we need uh, more batteries for the for the um, because we're consuming more. Ah, no, this is. I think it's because of the. No, this is because of the power transfer box. This this will change. We need to assign this power transfer box to each group. And this po this power transfer box it says that it consumes 150. So this is power that is used to for distribution. So let's do that. And this should be that bring the number down. Um, and I think yeah that's then the default is is more than enough because we have four we have like 600 600 um, energy units are only due to power boxes so it's like 100 the default is just consuming 100 per per tick so that's it now the power boxes are assigned so no worries about that. It's only the navigation that I'm worried now about. Um, because I think we won't have enough energy. So I think we can place like two extra batteries. Here and um, that will bring the total to eight nine right nine we can have we can have also this something like this there so that will bring the total to 10, 10 and 11, yes, and that's, yes, that's barely enough. That will give barely enough energy. So if we are fully loaded and we see that we are not... Um, we are not able to, to... to Well, that's another thing. With, that we can all always um, assign generators to that group. But for now, it's that this is okay, I think. Our speed went down because we added more um, weight, but that's enough. And one important thing is that for our um, for our escape pods, we will put them off by default, so they don't. they don't um, 
They don't consume all their energy w once we spawn it. Okay, so I think we're done now with the with the, with our ship, and we should try test drive it. Okay, so we finished uh, our design and we're going to test drive um, this um, bad boy in our next episode. So I will leave it here for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, leave a like and hope to see you in the next one. So this is Cyber Settler signing off.